Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and in today's video I'm going to be doing a huge collective wrap up. I really enjoyed the last one that I did, it just felt very seamless to me. Sometimes when I can't do my individual monthly wrap ups I think this is a great way of just getting them out all the books that I read because I have read some fantastic books recently. So this is going to be for the months of May, June, July, August and September is coming in the next video because I will definitely have time to film that. The first two books I read in May, The Lost Children and The Silent Victim, which were books 9 and 10 in the DCI Matilda Dark series. Now, I can't really talk too much about these or give the plot summaries because they are literally book 9 and 10 in the entire series, but I have been having the absolute best time with this detective series. It's the first detective series where I've just felt truly connected to the characters, and Matilda herself is such a seasoned veteran in dealing with these types of crimes. She is so likeable, and you really grow attached to these characters literally second third book in probably even first book in i was already rooting for them all i am so excited to carry on till i cannot catch a break in this series just been having a fantastic time with this i highly recommend you guys check out book one so the book i read after that was actually wuthering heights by emily bronte I feel like everyone has read Wuthering Heights or has had some interaction with it. Follow essentially a man called Lockwood is the new tenant of Thrushcross Grove. He goes to seek shelter one night at Wuthering Heights when there is a really bad storm, which is the home of his landlord. There he discovers the entire history of some really horrific events that took place in that household between two families. And our main two characters that we follow are Heathcliff and Catherine. A book about bitterness, revenge, rivalry, betrayal. There is so much passion and also retaliation in this book it was also just kind of a crazy ride i did give this four stars sometimes i'm leaving leaning towards a 3.5 while i enjoyed it it wasn't the smoothest reading experience for me i did have some issues um like not understanding certain scenes not understanding the language which again can just be me things and like an action-packed book this isn't what this is and sometimes it did make it feel just a little bit dull but it is also probably one of the wildest books that i've read with some crazy characters and considering when this this book was published and written was really ahead of its time in my opinion definitely in my opinion a book about obsession not so much love right, so the next classic i read after that i am really trying to branch out with my classics and just trying to find something that i really really enjoy which i have done so and i cannot wait to talk about that in this wrap up too and um, so the next book i read was murder on the orient express by agatha christie this is my first agatha christie book believe it or not i have never actually read the book or watched any of the movies so this was a first go for me so this book takes part in a wider universe called the Hercule, Hercule Poirot series. It's some sort of detective or investigator and he investigates a murder that happens on the train while the train is still running, reaching its destination. The person who is dead is an American tycoon. He is dead in his compartment, stabbed a dozen times. His door happens to be locked from the inside. Now, detective Poirot is actually on vacation, but when this event takes place he is all hands on deck trying to figure out who the murderer is before they reach their destination such a simple easy read it was just absolutely fantastic and i also really enjoyed this edition that i bought i honestly got it off amazon i don't even know what this is i was just completely swept away i was enthralled by this book when i was reading it i didn't think about anything else that was twisty and turny also just a thrilling ride and i felt that the ending of this book was a really unique way of doing it too I just simply really enjoyed this and I gave this five stars. The last book I read in May was ooh, Moonstone by Laura Purcell. Now this is an arc I received from the publisher. It also got this beautiful bookmark. This is a thrilling gothic romance with a real bite, it says. This is a YA debut. When reading this, I really did feel the YA in it. Basically, our main character, Camille, is sent away to live with a reclusive godmother. He keeps a very strict watch over her. This godmother also has a daughter who is very, very sick. Camille has to stay away from everything she knows. She lived quite an affluent life, and now where she lives with her godmother, it isn't that type of life. It is really hands-off. They have to farm the land they have to go and find their own food cook their own food camille starts to really find herself in this environment she feels particularly free she is also drawn to lucy the daughter of the godmother who is a pale sickly child she knows that there is some sort of mystery there things start to happen in this village there are claw marks scratched into the doors of villagers then camille starts to realize that her godmother is holding a terrible secret 
really did enjoy this. I gave this a four stars. It felt really original and just a different take on the plot that we have read quite a few times already. Some really great plot twists towards the ends as towards the end as well. And I do love a plot twist. Camille, our main character, honestly goes through so much changes. There were some parts where I genuinely felt so bad for her because there's so much that she just doesn't know or doesn't understand. A sheltered young woman who now finds herself really resilient I did feel that the ending a little bit in this book was quite rushed, but that also felt like that because I think there was so much to unpack and we had to get it done in a certain number of times but I wouldn't have minded if the book was just a little bit longer towards the end. There is also a sapphic romance in this like I said but it just didn't feel developed enough for me for the feelings that were suddenly outbursted between the two. Like I would have liked to have seen more between them as well. Their interactions were minimal to give this a 3.75 as I read on my Goodreads it is quick, it is easy, it is fast to read. It's really great to just sink your teeth into. Yeah, so those were all the books that I read in May. Right, then moving on to June. The first one being the penultimate book to the to the DCI Matilda Dark series, which is Below Ground. This is book 11. And can't really say much about this because it is book 11, but this was fantastic. I gave this five out of five stars. Every book after the next one just gets better and better and better. Now we only have one book left, which is book 12, and I'm not even sure when that's coming out. I need to double check that actually. And then that is the end of the series. I just don't want the series to end. I genuinely am going to be so upset when it ends because I have been loving it for a good few months months now and it's just been the best journey. So the book I read after that was When We Were Sisters by Fatima Asghar. Now I did genuinely pick up this book because it was um, beloved by Riz Ahmed and it says Fatima Asghar writes my heart. Three orphaned siblings are left to raise one another after their parents death. The youngest Kalsar grapples with her grief as she also charts out on her own understanding of gender. Aisha, the middle sister, spars with her crybaby younger sibling as she desperately tries to hold on to the sense of family in an impossible situation. And Noreen, the eldest, does her best in the role of sister mother while also trying to create a life for herself on her own terms. As Kosa grows up, she must choose whether to remain in the life of love, sorrow and codependency she has always known or carve out a new path for herself. When We Were Sisters tenderly examines the bonds and fractures of sisterhood, names the perils of being three Muslim American girls alone against the world and ultimately illustrates how those who have lost everything might still make homes in each other. Now, I can't lie, probably until the last chapter, this was a five stars for me. I was enthralled in this book and I will go into why I then changed my rating but essentially this was a beautiful lyrical book it focuses so much on love family on loss on grief and also what I took from this is a way of those things having feelings and meanings and descriptions without actually being known what those emotions are especially for someone who is so young like Kausa was we basically follow her from childhood to adulthood I was just really I really moved by this book anything that has um generational ties family bonds anything like that especially in a muslim family setting really really does get to me now my only gripe with this was that at the end of the book there was some really explicit sexual unnecessary language that i just think did not fit the theme of this book and what we were moving towards again i cannot comment on that because i did not write this book so i do think that genuinely it was put in the book for a reason and the author did that for a reason but to me it just felt so out of space and out of place it didn't feel like it was part of this book it felt like i had started completely something new and it, to me it was just really really jarring now again it's not me saying that those types of muslims do not exist because yes they do and i know that they do but it just really took me out of the headspace that i was in when i was reading this because i was like oh that's a bit you know it was just jarring honestly that was it the three sisters as they struggle basically with their identity and you can really see how identity crisis is fall into this book this did just take my rating down quite a bit more more of a 3.5 but i still enjoyed it it was still i learned a lot from it the book after that was jane eyre by charlotte bronte so we have another bronte sister here honestly these sisters were just ahead of their time now in this book we follow jane eyre who is probably one of my fic favorite fictional characters now not like up there up there but she's still definitely someone that I understand why everyone loves so much. She is an orphan, again orphaned into the house of her guardian, her aunt, who treats her absolutely horribly. Everyone does. They treat her like some sort of slave, some servant, like she's not a part of the family. She is then sent to a boarding school and at that boarding school, um, she we follow the rest of her life where she deals with a lot of, lot of issues. One of them being a loss that really does take a toll on her. After that, she takes up the post as a governess at the home of Mr. Rochester 
who she does then fall in love with is such a melodrama it is essentially her journey in looking for something bigger than herself she doesn't want to conform to what society expects of her and that in that sense of this being almost a feminist book is so amazing again for the time that it was written at like i said the sisters were just ahead of their times this was thought provoking engaging innovative like i'm still exploring classics this is definitely one that i would recommend probably more so than withering heights i really enjoyed this a lot more probably because of jane eyre and her characterization she's so mature and such a smart girl for the things that has happened to her she really doesn't take anything at face value it was just beautiful i was instantly capturized by it I have read some quotes over the years of these really beautiful lyrical quotes and now I know that they actually come from Jane Eyre. Then I read It's In His Kiss which is Bridge and Book 7 and we followed the sister Hyacinth in this book and I read this because I realised I hadn't finished the Bridgerton books which I started like last year and I read most of them and then Bridgerton season 3 part 1 came out and I finished that and I was just a bit underwhelmed by you all so then I wanted to go back into the books. Gave It's In His Kiss 3 stars because I enjoyed Hyacinth as an MC and I really loved the romance that she had. It was just a little bit weak, like it felt like just not stronger than the other books and I really didn't like that because the other books I thought in my opinion quite strong, especially like the first two or three books. But yeah, I don't really have much to say about that one. It is what it is. I read another classic, East of Eden by John Steinbeck. So the only other um, the only other John, Stein John Steinbeck book that I've read was Of Mice and Men back in school days. I actually really do want to reread that, but I genuinely remember so much of the story that I didn't think it was worth the time. This was a very interesting book. I did give this a four stars. This is set in the rich farmland of the Salinas Valley, California. This powerful, often brutal novel follows the intertwined destinies of two families, the Trusts and the Hamiltons, whose generations hopelessly reenacted the fall of Adam and Eve and the poisonous rivalry of Cain and Abel. Here, Steinbeck created some of his most memorable characters and explored his most endearing themes, the mystery of identity, the inexplicability of love, and the murderous consequences of love's absence. This was a really ambitious novel, and I think it performed what it needed to perform. So many people, this is their favourite John Steinbeck book, and I completely understand that. I did genuinely enjoy this. Like, it felt really long to me and really dense at times, and there was no plot at some times, but then it was like, that was the whole point of it. It was really Really nuanced just really realistic very complicated story about human behavior and there are also a lot of biblical themes and terms which i didn't expect because obviously i didn't realize that that's what it was but because we are following the kind of continuous fall of adam and eve that's what this is based on my favorite quote is probably all great and precious things are lonely it is often said that this is one of the greatest novels of all time which i completely understand i think you need to be in the right headspace to read this and it's not something i don't think it's something you can binge read or maybe just something that i couldn't binge read but i know people have yeah this was this was pretty fantastic i can't lie then the last book of june i read was cross the line by simul sultani this book in the wake of a social media fiasco f1 driver dev anderson's career is on the line he needs help to save his image and fast and at a party in monaco he bumps into the woman who could potentially fix it all there's just one problem she's his best friend's little sister and okay there's another little problem he kissed her last year and has been able to stop thinking about her since macaron loving sweet talking social media extraordinaire willow williams needs her work experience to bag the job of her dreams so when dev offers her a temporary solution she can't help but say yes even if it means ignoring the crush she's had him since childhood. It was such a cute romance and very likeable, very genuine. If this a four stars, the author has a great way with words, creating such intensity between characters. Last half left me looking forward to a lot more. It was really nice just not to see any stupid third um, act breakups or some silly arguments. I really hate when romance books have that because I know authors add it to make it feel more realistic and more meaningful and you know show that the relationship could go through anything but I just like a book where it's just straight romance sometimes. Yeah love to see it, great romance, highly recommend especially if you're into Formula One and things like that, racing, I don't really know much about it but this is that book. And I have the books for July. First book I read in July was Fire and Blood by George R. R. Martin. I started reading this two years ago and then I stopped it. And I started reading it because of House of Dragon. I finished season one and then I just stopped reading it and I don't know why. I did finish this book and it was fantastic. I loved learning about the history of the Targaryens, especially the way that they descended from the throne. 
and how they were on the throne for many 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 years and decades we got to Rhaenyra and everything happening with Rhaenyra and yeah it follows the story about the last Targaryen on the line before it was taken by Robert Baratheon which was really really interesting if you are a Game of Thrones fan Oh, a House of Dragon fan and you want to know about what happens in their history, I highly recommend this book. It does stop after the reign of Rhaenyra's youngest son, if I remember correctly. Five stars. This was fantastic. I just really enjoyed reading about this and some things were just shocking. I like how it's kind of told from two different perspectives. It's essentially a history textbook. Some sources are really unreliable and you cannot trust what they are saying is true. Right, then I wanted to start a new series and I started My Brilliant Friend by Elena Ferrante and I have the rest of the series of this. I know that we follow the journey of a few characters in this book and I think because this followed childhood to adolescence I just wasn't that interested. It is a really rich intense story between a few characters and essentially the relationship between these two girls and their friendship and them growing up and where that they live and how that they live has slowly transformed their lives this is beautiful it was really, really lyrical it was quite intense as well i am excited to carry on i feel like the next three books might be something more that i enjoy than this one because this was more of a startup um and i gave this three stars and i read my arc of immortal dark by ty just girma now this book is out now and it's already at like the top of the bestseller list which is just fantastic there was some issues with this book a little bit because i just expected to fall in love with the characters fall in love with the story and there were some things that really really did hit and some things that just didn't hit normally want to gravitate towards the romance in a fantasy book i like it as a subplot i don't like like it as the main plot but this the romance was the only thing to be honest that kind of saved me in this sense it just really really worked this is blurbed as a dangerously romantic dark academia fantasy where a lost their rest must infiltrate an arcade society and live with the vampires that she suspects has killed her family and kidnapped her sister We've gone long before my time but something has always hunted our family Orphaned heiress Kidane Adain grew up from far from the arcane society she was born into where human bloodlines gain power through through vampire companionship. When her sister June disappears, Kidane is convinced a vampire stole her. The very vampire bound to their family, the cruel yet captivating Susenius Sagat. I really did like Susenius as well as the vampire. I liked the way that the vampires were written too. Just felt like it was a lot of telling and not explaining. I felt like the plot sometimes lacked a bit of cohesion. We followed the main character Kidane just kind of doing stuff and we didn't really know what she was doing and nothing was really explained and I kind of just felt really confused. The magic system was a little bit confusing to me as well. I wish we delved more into the lore of the Draniacs, what they call the vampires in this book. This book just had so much potential and I was just so disappointed because it just fell flat for me and I don't know if it was just me because I might be in the minority. A lot of people did really enjoy this book. I just didn't like also the eroticism of the blood drinking, blood coating. It was just a bit yucky to me, especially considering this is meant to be a YA. Kidane and Susanios were the two that saved this book for me and that's why I carried on reading. They were always at each other's throat, constant arguing and it felt good because you know why they're doing that. It's not just for stupid reasons. Tension was also just so palpable, like their chemistry was burning. I hope we do get more world building in book two, uh, more development of the Draniacs as well and the whole world has really so much potential. I really did enjoy the book. I just found myself a bit frustrated having to power through some parts where it really did lag and it's not like the longest book in the world and all black cast as well, which is just the icing on the cake. The last book I read in July was Girls Who Burn by MK Pagano. It's was fantastic. Highly, highly recommend. I loved this. I read it in about four or five hours in literally one sitting. In this book, we follow Addie, who said some really, really horrible things to her sister, who then a few hours was found dead at the bottom of a ravine. The police ruled her death as an accident, but Addie never bought that story. The sister had a bright future. She had a scholarship awaiting her. There was no reason for her to do that or even to commit suicide. Addie is convinced that her sister was murdered by someone that she knows. He is joined in by a partner in crime, basically tried to catch the real killer. This was just really well constructed. And the perpetrator, the person who did kill the sister, was probably more obvious to others than it was to me because it wasn't so obvious to me. That's why I think I enjoyed this book so much. And it was more of a shock when it came out i love stuff like that it keeps you really on your toes but at times the female main character was really headstrong and she just needed to be open to more potential suspects like if it was linked to her 
and someone she knew she didn't want to hear about. I understand that because it conflicts with her own morals and beliefs. There was really complex relationships and more. It was just great. Overall, I thought it was fantastic. Really recommend this book. It was a fantastic ride full of secrets and mysteries. It was a great thriller and a mystery too. And for anyone who hasn't really read mysteries or thrillers, this would be a really great beginner book as well. Yes, these are all the books I read in July little bit of a chain did have to pop out for a little bit but i'm back ready to finish the video now moving on to august i read seven books in august which is pretty impressive i anticipated a lot more just because um this is when i'm off from work so i work in a school so i get the summer term off i'm only in work i was only in work one week but there was just a lot going on this summer and honestly time went away from me so quickly so i read seven books only but i'm so glad that i did because i read some fantastic books i also had two rereads and i read probably the best classic in the entire world and my absolute new favorite i think i could talk about that book forever so let's get started so the first book i finished after two months of reading in august was the count of monte cristo just look at this book i loved this book i had it on three different formats because it is a chunky book it has it is at least 1250 pages no 1300 pages so it is chunky and i do believe i was intimidated by the size at the start and then i thought you know what you're not gonna know how are you gonna feel about it until you start it so i did just start it got like maybe 50 pages in 80 pages in and i was hooked already the translation by robin bus i believe translation by robin bus was so accessible it was so easy to understand and i think played a huge part into why i enjoyed the book as a whole so the count of monte cristo essentially is a tale of revenge of retribution adventure and more we follow our main character at the start who is a newly minted adult his name is edmund dantes he is imprisoned for a crime that he did not commit and is sentenced to death prison for a crime that he did not commit and in this prison he spends 15 years and in this prison he meets another man teaches him about the world teaches teaches him languages mathematics humanities so many things and that's where he learns about a hidden treasure on the isle of monte cristo and he becomes determined not only to escape this hellhole that he is in use the treasure to plot the demise of his enemies so there are three men responsible for his incarceration and he is determined to enact revenge on all three of them for the part that they played in this this is an epic epic tale of human suffering and edmund dantes himself what a man what a man this is what a classic should be this the emotions that this provoked when you read it you feel so many things and this book is a long book but honestly it could have been another 400 pages and i would have been okay with it dumas's writing is something else it is so beautiful almost elegant straight from the beginning so in this book we have edmund dantes and eventually he becomes the count of monte cristo now these are two different personas we don't get to see edmund for a long long time and the entire time he is the Count of Monte Cristo. People don't recognize him. He becomes a figure well known to the people who are behind his retribution, but they don't know that that's Edmund. They don't even remember what happened. It happened so long ago. They've essentially forgotten about him, but he has not forgotten about them. He has this perfectly executed plan that works so well. This just captured my attention straight from the beginning. And when I finished it, I literally sat there and I had so many thoughts going through my head that I just can't believe it ended. Like Edmund Dantes himself, 19 years old he has he had his entire life ahead of him he had a really good thing going and then he's thrown in jail for something that he did not even do and the reason why he's in jail because of it is because of some jealous men he is sent away to an island prison an island prison there is no way for him to get off he manages to escape through a very very difficult thing essentially the betrayal that he feels is something that plays a part throughout the entirety of the book you are so integrated into these characters and seeing their lives and seeing how they've essentially moved on from what they did to him it seems to be sometimes mixed opinions about this book being too long i am in not that pile because i genuinely thought that the length played a huge part into his suffering it was almost like a metaphor for how long he was in prison for how long he had to deal with the things that were thrown at him it was really 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 isolating what he dealt with he had no one to talk to no company no nothing until he met the other person and i saw that some people did not like um the count because of his vengeful side again i was like 
rooting for him because he had every reason to do these things so i didn't think this book was too long and i didn't think that he was a bad person or a bad character i thought he was characterized absolutely incredibly probably one of the best characters i have read about in my whole life i have also recently learned that this was actually published in installments which makes sense because there are parts in this book and sometimes it does feel like a few novels in one i was just not bored there were some parts where i thought mm, i don't really care about this mainly the political parts but at the end of it i was like you know what this has absolutely gone down as one of my favorite reads this year probably one of my favorite reads of this entire decade of my life and this is just incredible and i think i read this at the most perfect time in my life too i was just at that age where i completely understood everything that edwin did a mammoth of a book but one book that will stay with me for such a long time there was even moments i cried i just didn't think i was gonna love this as much as i did and it just totally took my breath away it was an absolutely breathtaking elegance tale so much anger despair sadness betrayal but yeah oh my god if you have this and it's been sitting on your shelf just pick it up give it a go sometimes you just need to take that leap like i did and i just started it and within 50 pages i was hooked and i was like it did take me a long time to read it just because of how thick it was and i also wanted to savor it but fantastic five out of five million julian stars highly recommend please pick this up especially if you are a classic rubber or even if you're new to classic i still think this is a great book then i picked up quicksilver by kelly hart i will read you the summary for this because i don't think i can explain this properly it says, in the land of the unforgiving desert, there isn't much a girl wouldn't do for a glass of water. 24-year-old Sarah Fane is good at keeping secrets. No one knows about the strange powers she possesses or the fact that she has been picking pockets and stealing from the undying Queen's Reservoir for as long as she can remember. But a secret like that is a knot. Do not or later, it is bound to come undone. When Ceres comes face to face with death himself, she inadvertently reopens a gateway between the realms and is transported to a land of ice and snow. The Fae have always been a stuff of legend myth of nightmares but it turns out they're real and Ceres has landed herself right in the middle of a centuries-long conflict that might just get her killed Ceres mistakenly binds herself to kingfisher a handsome fey warrior who has secrets and nefarious agendas of his own he will use her alchemist's magic to protect his people no matter what it costs him or her death has a name it is Kingfisher of the Ajan Gate. His past is murky, his attitude stink, and he's the only way Ceres is going to make it home. So if you couldn't guess from the summary from the blurb already that Ceres and Kingfisher have a romance, and I actually liked this romance. Now, this was a book I saw on TikTok, and again, I'm not one to go off TikTok books, but I just was kind of interested in this, and I thought this definitely could be something. So it had some issues but i did not actually hate the book at all i did genuinely like it i gave it a four stars i didn't read it so critically like i wasn't analyzing everything i was reading i was just genuinely having a good time with it would most likely carry on with book two a lot of days now with fantasy books when they are a famous on tiktok or anything like that the mcs are so irritating but the mcs in this were genuinely had a lot going to them it was a really good plot and i liked the idea of the quicksilver magic i even liked the romance between her and kingfisher he could have been irritating at times at the start but then once you start seeing their interactions i was like okay i don't totally hate this but i probably will most likely carry on with book two i have definitely seen mixed reviews people are like this is just, just a load of nut but i also think I liked the book because I thought the writing was quite good too. Then I reread book one and book two in the Dark First series by Rue Nix. Now Rue Nix is probably one of my favourite authors of all time. The Dark First series is one of the best series I have ever read. Rue Nix, the author, has had um, a hard two years so she wasn't able to release the last book in the Dark First series and then we got a release date October 29th and it's going to be the last book in the series, The Syndicator. This is a book I've been waiting for for almost two years now and we're going to wrap up the stories it's going to be a big chunky book like runic said it's going to be emotional it's going to be heartbreaking we're going to see all the characters that we love again and all the couples so in preparation for that i wanted to reread the entire series so the first five books i haven't actually gotten to book three yet these are the first dark romance books that i have read where it's not just um sexual abuse or abuse against women it's genuinely a dark novel with a dark plot and i love everything about this series the characters the plot everything the summary says in the dark underbelly of the mob tristan kane has been an anomaly as the only non-blooded member in the high circle of the tenebrae outfit he is an enigma to all his skills unparall unparalleled his morality questionable and his motives unknown he is lethal and he knows it as does Morana Vitalio, 
my queen. The genius extraordinaire daughter of the rival family, what Kane does with weapons, Morana does with computers. When twenty year old when a twenty year old mystery resurfaces, Morana infiltrates Kane's house, intent on killing him, unaware of a tie that binds them together. Hate, heat and history clash together with unexpected sparks, but something bigger, something worse is happening in the world, and despite their an animosity, only they can fight it down. I don't know what else there is to say about Dark First. Um it's amazing. If you want to read something which is dark and gritty but has an absolutely excellent plot, something that's probably different to what you've read before, and it's not just a man abusing a woman and we're calling it a dark romance, it's not one of those ones. This is genuine romance done in just a beautiful way. I don't even know how to explain it. Tristan and Morana are like that, but Tristan hates her. They're enemies to lovers, BT dubs. Enemies for a reason and it's not just nonsense it's an actual reason why they're enemies which is why i loved this book and in the last book it's going to be all of them and we're going to wrap it all up and it's going to be fantastic so i do recommend the dark first series um do check out the trigger warnings as well and i read the first book in the first year trilogy the assassin's apprentice i feel like everybody knows what this is so i'm not going to read the blurb or anything but um i read book one i read book two in september so this month and i'm currently on book three and i have been loving it this world has about 20 books i think and it's like a trilogy I after a trilogy after a trilogy kind of like mortal instruments I'm really excited about this because i absolutely love fitz the main character in this book um he's really coming into his own and he just has so much going on i read book two it's in my 24 hour reading vlog if you guys want to check that out because i talk about it a lot in there how much i adored that book fitz is just amazing and he deserves the entire world this was a four stars like I said, I do talk more about these three books in the reading vlog because I read those in there. So I won't go too in-depth on my thoughts of these. Um, this is Fall With Me by Becca Mack. It's a hockey romance. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I love this. Love the main characters. Jackson is a loving, soft, vulnerable man. And he's in love with Lennon. Two together are just so cute. I love this series. It's just cutesy and romantic and also not afraid to talk about the hardships in life. This is great fantastic i gave this a four stars then i have the 30th child by uh erin a craig this is an arc from the publisher this was fantastic as well i talk about this in the reading blog a lot because this took me by surprise and this is standalone this was fantastic i loved the plot of this i love the ambiance of this it's a gothic fairy tale retelling we follow hazel she's under the guardianship of the god death himself and she has the power to cure any ailment and any illness until she gets to the king and he has something that she cannot cure and we basically follow her life and her tale as she tries to do this and there is so much more going on to what we know i couldn't stop thinking about this for at least two weeks after i finished it. i still think about it now and i'm shocked that it's a standalone because this could have been something great for a series but i like the fact that it's a standalone too because sometimes just having one book and doing it really really well is fantastic this was literally a five stars for me and just a great fantasy i really hope this does well when it's released on september 26th so not even that far away right now that was a lot of talking Thank you so much for being here and joining me on this video where I talk about all the books that I read in the past few months. It's been really great. But if you made it to the end of the video, thank you so much for watching. I hope it wasn't boring. I hope it was interesting. I hope you could get some recommendations. If you read any of these books, please let me know or if any of them look interesting to you. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.